So then uh, we come now to the fifth and final talk of, on mudita. Uh, I like to call it rejoicing or rejoicement, sympathetic joy or appreciative joy. And um, with all these Brahma Viharas, with all these four divine abodes of loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity, I think it's very useful and important to see them as an expression or as a manifestation or as a consequence of inner freedom. And that uh, depending uh, an inner freedom is a uh, metaphor for that is an open heart. The doors of the heart are open. If there's a lock on the door, then the heart's not open. And in some ways that protects us from the sufferings of others. There's difficulties of the world. We don't take it in. We keep everything away. But it's at a tremendous cost because any, any ways in which the doors of the heart are locked, it also locks it from our capacity for joy and happiness, for love and kindness. And the, uh, if those doors can be wide open, what we discover is that yes, we will take in and experience the suffering of the world, but it'll just flow right through. Almost as if what the, do- what the heart is, is just a door. And to have that door right, wide open, everything goes through. And um, in a wonderful way. And we do experience suffering of the world more acutely, but it, with a door open, it doesn't have to, we don't suffer because of it. We're not a victim of that, what's happening in the world, but we do experience it. But the very ability to experience the suffering of the world more is, uh, is the very uh, way of being that allows us to experience joy and happiness more that it's just a symptom of the open door. And, um, and so with the open door wide and we experience suffering, there, we can have compassion. But if we experience the joys of the world, we can feel joy and delight. So in Buddhism, this is very important because um, in Buddhism, our natural capacity for being ethical, being virtuous, living a good life, is very much connected to our capacity to be happy. The more happy we are in this deep dharmic way, deep appreciate, you know, deep way, that is not because we won the lottery, but because we're really settled and at home and not in conflict with ourselves, that the more we have this inner happiness, the more natural it is to live an ethical life, to live a life that's wholesome and supportive for the world. So rather than thinking of cultivating happiness and well-being to be a um, selfish thing or a uh, thing to do, it's really a vehicle in Buddhism for living a selfless life, for living a life that's beneficial for the world, that's supportive for others. And so cultivating happiness here for oneself can be seen as a part of the path to living for the welfare and happiness of others. It's also the path for greater and greater freedom. And so mudita is seen as a practice of, that's freeing. And so it frees us from um, being, having envy, frees us from having a closed heart, from envy, from being jealous. There's a certain kind of freedom from fear that comes with sympathetic joy, with appreciative joy. Because this ability to live with an open heart um, uh, uh, you know, is a heart that is not closed in any way, is not closing down, not locking itself up in the way that envy, jealousy, fear, discontent um, uh, might feel. And so, uh, and so this movement towards freedom as we develop this more and more this sympathetic joy, something keeps opening in us. Joy is an opening. It's like the oil on the hinges of the door, perhaps. It just keeps opening and opening. 
and um, and it's more and more freeing. And the, this is uh, important because in Buddhism, freedom is kind of the or is the reference point for how we live our lives. It's a reference point for how we keep growing and developing, how we expand. We're expanding freedom. We're uh, out to further and further dimensions of the heart, the mind, the body, how we live. But we have to have some feel, a real feeling for what it's like in the heart or the mind or the inner life for there to be freedom, for there to be an absence of clinging, absence of contraction. And to begin getting that feeling, getting that sense and knowing what it is and experientially knowing for oneself, oh, this is what it is. At first it might be like that door opens a little bit, but now we know that the door can be opened. We didn't even know it was a door before because it was always closed. And then we start seeing, oh, this is a door, it's open. Let's see what we can do to open it more and more and more. And the uh, Brahma Viharas are all ways that we can keep opening. And so with sympathetic joy, appreciative joy, rejoicement, that to do it in a way not blindly, not naively, not sentimentally, but do it maturely and powerfully as a way for greater and greater freedom. And the more inner freedom we have, the more we'll rejoice, more we'll delight and appreciate what should be appreciated. And the more we delight and appreciate what can be appreciated, then uh, the more we'll become free. This wonderful reciprocity or mutuality of these two movements. And so to go through a day and appreciate, not because it's a duty or an obligation, not because we have to kind of be sentimental or be kind of make, have rose-colored glasses on, not at all. But it turns out there's a lot to appreciate without the rose-colored glasses. It's just lots of things. And um, we can appreciate that it's a new morning for those that are, it's, it's morning. We can appreciate the fact that we have electricity for those of us electricity. We can appreciate the fact we have candles when there's no electricity. One of the, in the collection of year year end photographs we gather together to give to a relative. Um, there's a picture of my younger son uh, doing his homework uh, in candlelight. It's such a beautiful picture and delightful picture to see. He's, you know, uh, I don't know, there's probably half a dozen, a dozen candles around him and he's working on his, on his homework and the power outages that have happened. And... Um, Things are more delightful and appreciable than we many, many times give ourselves credit for. And can you appreciate others? Pe- other people really thrive in appreciation. Appreciate them realistically. But in doing so, can you become freer? And when you don't appreciate, when you're grumpy or critical of others, can you recognize, as mindfulness practitioners, can you recognize how you are not free. What is closed in you? What is the movement is more toward contraction and being closed into opening and expansion. As mudita becomes stronger and stronger, the freedom of mudita is expressed or discovered in what's called breaking down the barriers. And this is, um, Barriers are uh, the ways in which we have walls between ourselves and other people. So if we have, if someone is our enemy, we might have big walls. But to break down the walls, so we're able to appreciate them as well. Not to deny they're difficult, not to um, condone how they are or be naive about how to take care of ourselves with them. But ev- everyone is more than just the ways they're difficult. And so to break down the barriers is to have this broad, open ability to love, to experience with mudita, to experience joy, appreciation for everyone that you encounter. And there's no 
limits, there's no barriers between one category of people and other. You don't just appreciate your family or your friends. You appreciate the people who are neutral in your life and just the people you pass on the streets and just you vaguely know. You appreciate um, the people who are difficult in your life. And in classic Buddhist language, you find some sympathetic joy and appreciation even for your enemies. And uh, they're still called your enemies for good reason, perhaps, because you have to be careful around them. But still, to open up. And it's such a good thing to do. And what you probably will find is that some of the difficult people in your life, some of your enemies, some people who have their hostility with, sometimes their hostility lessens when we are no longer hostile, when no, we are lo- no longer defensive, but we actually can open our hearts and appreciate other people as well. So this movement towards freedom, breaking down the barriers, and uh, having this open door to the whole world. And this is the direction of Buddhist practice to greater and greater freedom. And as we become uh, fully free, uh, we become a force of love and kindness and goodwill for the world. And what a great thing to do especially on this day, 25th of December, joy to the world, to become, to bring that joy, to be the bringer of joy to the world, to uh, be inspired, to really be a force of good and joy for the welfare and happiness of all. And I want to finally read a passage that I think I've read recently, that uh, when a person becomes free, liberated, emancipated, um, um, and, uh, and comes to the destruction of suffering, the end of their own suffering. This person then, naturally, without intending it even, creates love and respect, conduces to social cohesion, to non-dispute, to concord and to unity. May our capacity for appreciation and joy and the joy of others may be for concord, for unity, for social cohesion, for respect and for love. And may that be how we go forward into this coming year. Thank you all. <laughs>